This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing amongst friends. And thank you for being part of the pit crew. Thank you for being here each and every day just to talk about what's going on in sim racing. And it is a, a slow time of the year, so today's show should be pretty quick. I say that a lot. Uh, and then I end up distracted with things to talk about, and it goes long. But anyway, unless you guys distract me, today will probably be a pretty brief show. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about, but a few things. So why don't we jump right into it and see what is worthy of being talked about. Number one, uh, for you Xbox One Formula One or F1 2018 players, uh, there was a patch released just today, three hours ago apparently, patch 1.04. And we do have some patch notes. So I guess the uh, Xbox had some specific issues that have already been addressed. Haven't heard any news about uh, the the PS4 or PC versions and whether there's any patch on the horizon or anything. Um, yeah, Dave, we were. We went down uh, memory lane uh, on Discord. And anybody who doesn't know what we t are talking about, uh, it's part of the patron program. We hang out on Discord and... We uh, just always are humoring each other, and today was a trip down memory lane, uh, which is very fun to do. Um, anyway, uh, one thing. Uh, so, yeah, there's the notes on the whole patch for F1 2018. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Hey, where'd it go? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear iRacing. Happy birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday to iRacing. Uh, they turned 10 years old. I, I talk about going down memory lane. My mic is too low. Are you sure? Can I'll need more than one person to confirm. It looks normal on my end. Uh, but cool things out of iRacing, not just cake, but in addition to cake, we also, if you're an iRacing member, you would have, uh, received a $5 credit yesterday. And uh, when I got on iRacing yesterday, that is what I saw, $5. So, you know, with $5 on iRacing, I guess I'll go to the movies by myself. I guess I'll buy a third of a car. Uh, anyway, $5, you could host a couple of rooms. I, I don't think that that version of singing is going to get us in trouble on copyright. I'm pretty sure that was enough off-key and enough uh, not on point to uh, no worry there. Uh, okay, so anyway, what else we have? Greg Hill, uh, one of the main guys over at iRacing, posted a cool video. You know, we focus a lot on the day-to-night transition, but it goes beyond that. They're calling it basically just the Sky Project. So here's a time-lapse video of showing the clouds and how they cast shadows onto the ground and block out the sun. Uh, really cool video, and my white mic has been low for weeks 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 i can turn it up just a tear hair i'm right at the bottom of my yellow meter um <laughs> anyway uh some cool effects to be seen we're all anticipating the day to night transition you know if you run any of the uh the endurance races it's a pretty big deal uh when you're running 24 hours and it's always daylight um so, anyway, cool video from them, and what else? Uh, I guess there was a big save. Ilka Hapla, he was in the videos we were posting on Discord earlier today. We were talking about the old days before uh, Inside Sim Racing, before uh, SRT, uh, and a little bit of how Darren and I got our start in uh, sim racing broadcasting. And for those who don't know, I mean, maybe I should just pull it up and show you guys. We're, like I said, we have a, a slow news day. Here, give me one moment. I'll show you what we are watching. Um, whoops, whoops. I just turned up the audio very, very, very slightly. Um, hopefully that'll be fine for everybody and not a problem. Uh, uh, here we go. Bear with me. I'm going to bring up what we are watching. Um, we were talking about the things that Darren and I did and how we ended up getting together to form Sim Racing Tonight. This was actually after the show had been going, but this was a, an intro video that Darren and I had done to a, uh, an endurance race series that we were going to be participating, actually. But 
uh, we were talking about the old Flog series, which is a series that y you think of some of the names. We just uh, saw Ilka Hapala in that iRacing wreck. He was in there, Dom Doohan, Gregor Doohan. Um, I mean, just a, a huge, huge list of talent ran in that Flog series that Darren and I used to broadcast on. Um, but that's how everything got to begin. So that's the when I was talking about memory lane and what people are talking about in the chat there. Uh, that is what the conversation is, and it was already, uh, and this is going on on the Discord. Uh, today I'm not on the Blue Yeti, I'm actually on an Audio uh, Audio Technica 2020, A2020 mic, um, which everything looks good on my end, so I'm going to leave it be. Uh, anyway, NASCAR also looking at iRacing. They have their power rankings, and this is as the, the playoffs are underway. So this is the who's who fighting it out for the championship. We've mentioned it, but there's Ryan Lusa. Four wins, seven top fives, nine top tens, three poles. He's led 469 laps, making him the number one ranked driver as we uh, get into the, the 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 finals or the whatever you want to call the run to the cup. Keegan Leahy, uh, three wins, seven top fives, nine top tens, two poles, 479 laps led, sitting in number two. Ray Alfalo with one win. Michael Conti hasn't got a win yet, but he is at the top and still in contention. Uh, still had top hair. <laughs> Bobby Zielinski, one win. Nick Ottinger, one win. Nicholas Shelton, one win. Matt Busa. Uh, wow, he's really moved up the ranks in iRacing. I remember racing with Matt Busa not too long ago. Now he's running peak antifreeze series level racing. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you. What else? Last thing on iRacing is uh, tomorrow night, our good friends at the Lionheart IndyCar Series, they are going to be running the Wounded Warrior, the USMC, U.S. Military Corps, Wounded Warrior 200. And that'll be live on iRacing Live as they are one of the teams that got promoted to the, uh, the iRacing eSport channel. So one day, 10 hours from now, you can watch that. Should be good entertainment for a Wednesday night. We already said happy birthday to uh, iRacing, but uh, 10 years, that's awesome. Uh, out of GT Planet, they're letting us know about a GT Sport. Its next update arrives tomorrow. So I didn't even know another one was on the way, but apparently tomorrow there will be yet another update to uh, the ever getting better GT Sport sim. I think it has a lot to do with some of the new competition stuff that they've been Adding to the sim, I see Sim Racing 604 is in the channel. You're on our news today. Um, what else? Also at GT Planet, they have the full list of cars coming to V Rally 4. So uh, pretty impressive list. Let's, let's just name a few. I see they got a couple of Porsches in V Rally. So the 911 GT3 RS, interesting. Um, too bad it wasn't the old school. Uh, let's see, those are actually the rally cars, and they have the re rally cross, hill climb cars, buggies, and extreme Kana cars, like the Shelby GT500. Uh, we have some images of some of the cars here. This is actually at True Achievements, and it's the full car roster. That actually doesn't look like the full car roster to me. Um, oh, because it's split into categories. This was the rally uh, cars. So when we see the Porsches, wow, that really is just a GT3. Wouldn't you expect more of a rally-style GT3? Um, anyway, and then there's the images there of the rally cross cars. Oh, mine hasn't loaded, but you guys, there it is, hill climb cars. Mazda SP3, what's that? Interesting. Oh, I love this one, the Suzuki SX4 with the full front wing. Badass. Word of the day. Badass. Extreme Kana cars. There they are. So you can check that out at True Achievements if you want to see all of the imagery. Uh, what else? Ah, I saw this at Race Department, and one of my heroes in life is Alex Zanardi. Um, this guy. This guy is, is everything that we all aspire to be. And getting on in the years... And being a quadriplegic and using hand controls, Alex Zanardi gets himself into the DTM series and finishes fifth place. So I know for a lot of people, fifth isn't like 
You know, you're not on the podium, but when you consider his age, what he's been through, um, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, LRC asks what the F1 patch, uh, patch 1.04 for the Xbox version only. Um, so I didn't see any news of, of a PS4 or a PC patch. Um, oh, good point, Billy. Yes, not all rallies are, um, not, not all rallies are on the dirt or snow. You're right. You're 100% right there. Um, but anyway, congratulations to Alex Zanardi and another one of my personal heroes. So that's why I talk about it. Paraplegic. Thank you, Spatial. <clears throat> thank you, Darren. Thank you. Sorry, I got my, uh disabilities mixed up uh race him studio i you know mitchy and i on saturday did the nordschleife zabine schmidt challenge trying to get that ford transit van yeah quad is for that makes total sense um <laughs> sorry sorry um anyway uh really fantastic car that dodge viper that we drove was from race him studio it is paid dlc but here we are looking at the now released uh, Formula RSS. You can see it's got the modern halo. Actually, it's not even, it's different. That's not an F1 halo. I see like a hinge point, like that thing actually swings forward. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that is now available. You can buy the mod here. I'm not sure where that takes you. But, uh, oh, and I didn't mention it's the Assetto Corsa version, but as far as paid DLC, paid content, paid mods, Race Sim Studio does do a very good job. So that might be the car you need to uh, get you back inspired on Assetto Corsa. <laughs> you know, when we get to the end, and, and here's a great question. Are we at the end of life for Assetto Corsa? I mean, traditionally, when the next gen comes, sure, people like my brother like playing the last year's model, whatever. But... For the most part, when the next gen of a game or a sim comes out, the previous version just kind of gets swept under the rug. You know, there's a decrease in content, a decrease in updates, a decrease in enthusiasm as the new one sort of takes over. And I kind of think, will Competizione do that to Assetto Corsa? Or is Competizione so specific in what it's doing i mean like there's no open wheeled right um does that mean they're gonna both coexist <clears throat> spatial dragon says r.i.p race rest in peace i'm assuming you need to uh to to uh you mean the death of assetto corsa i'm not sure in this case because with competition and and maybe what will affect that is how fast additional content and if additional content comes out for competizione <laughs> you don't see the viper on their website i got it from them it's part of this pack here isn't it no no yeah it's part of this pack there it is on the end the yellow one um they're funny names but uh oh oh sorry can I pull it up? Nope. 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 But it is there. I, I, I bought it individually, just so you know, at Race Sim Studio. So somewhere within their store, I was able to buy. Here, here, here. Here we go. There it is. The GT Vortex V10 for Assetto Corsa. <clears throat> that is the car we used in the Sabine Schmidt Challenge. Really nice car, great sound. I enjoyed that car quite a bit. Didn't really get to stretch its legs. <clears throat> um, anyway, so uh, that that is one thing that I think about when I think about uh, uh, Assetto Corsa and what will happen to Assetto Corsa when Competizione comes out. And will Competizione as a single discipline series, will it be enough for people? Uh, you know, I mean, how many tracks? 10, 12 tracks? Uh, the set cars, and that's it. Will that make people content? Will that steal the thunder? Anyway, um, yeah, KA, that's what I think. I think as long as the modding community is going, I agree. ACC uh, or Assetto Corsa will stick around for a long time. It certainly could. 
But then it could come back to, will there be any further development to it? Uh, so worthplaying.com, talking about Ride 3. And I got to tell you, I made it my thumbnail of the day because, man, I wish I could get excited about this. It looks really cool. And I love the concept of a motorcycle sim. I played TT Isle of Man, and I thought it was pretty fun. Um, but there's just something missing for motorcycle sims for me. That whole control factor. Um, the graphics on this look great. <coughs> um, sorry, throwing a lot of ums as I just look through these pictures. Again, I would love to love Ride 3. And we'll see if in the end it can do that. Is that a motard? Is that what they call those things? The little front wheel? Uh, anyway, okay, what else we got? WCCF Tech, talking about the Grand Tour game preview. Nothing really new that we haven't already seen, uh, but just something else. That's the cool thing, I think, for a lot of people right there. Four-player split screen. So look, blue BMW down here is side-by-side -side with the ambulance. And then if we're in the Mustang, which is sitting between the two behind... There's the ambulance. There's the white car, the Porsche Carrera out front. I love it. Uh, very cool. What do you see that's wrong, though? I'll tell you what I see that's wrong in the screenshots of the game I'm seeing. I do not see any cockpit view. Do you? I see a bunch of top gear. That doesn't help me. There's some gameplay. Super Motard. Yep. <laughs> and the name says it all. <laughs> I got my disabilities wrong. It's a Motard. All right. What else we got? NASCAR Heat 3 track gameplay videos. Uh, what I did like about this is, if I'm not mistaken, these are showing it at different graphical levels, or is that something else I was looking at earlier? Sorry. Anyway, a couple cool videos. Here's Road America in NASCAR Heat 3. In addition to that, there's a video of Mossport, Canadian Tire, uh, where they just ran the, the trucks last week, didn't they? Let's watch Leap of Faith. That's what I call the hill. Oh, wait, wait. Where am I? Where am I? Here we go. Leap of Faith. Whoa! It looked like, you know, from that roof cam, I could see over the hill the whole time. Didn't look as scary as I'm accustomed to. NASCAR Heat 3, and that was at uh, trueachievements.com as well. <coughs> uh, it's spatial. It's all game. All game, buddy. Um, I did tie, zip tied a broom handle, broomstick to my wheel once and was doing that. And it was kind of better, but it was still silly. Um, I think the best thing I ever did, honestly, for a motorcycle control was Fnatic used to have a speed controller, I think they called it, and it would pivot like this, and it that was an axis, like moving this hinge between the two halves, and it kind of like gave you a little bit of that lean-in feeling more than anything else I've ever done, but it was a total controller. Um, so celebrate Need for Speed's 24th birthday in Payback. So apparently they have some things going into Need for Speed Payback honoring the 24th birthday of the franchise. Um, yes, yes, we did, Darren. We did a whole thing trying to find motorcycle controls, I believe. Uh, so what you'll find in the game are some things honoring the 24th anniversary of the franchise. And that includes um, uh, a new abandoned car, double rep, double cash, birthday presents. You know, I'm getting text messages, which is often a warning that I'm doing it wrong. Um, nope, in this case, it's just a text message. Sorry about that. I would never subject you guys to that kind of thing. <clears throat> but, again, sometimes I screw up the show and I get a warning from a friend like, hey, your graphic's wrong. All right, I think that's the end of the 
sim games, and now I think we have some tech stuff. I think I put it all in the right order today. I'm going to blow through these because I think for tech, it's about you guys knowing. So if you have interest, you can go find it. I'm not going to – I'm not a tech guy, but it does step on our toes, so to speak. Speak. Um, FreeSync on an NVIDIA 1066 gigabyte. So this is the new thing. Can you get FreeSync? working so that was a thread on reddit about amd using it pc world this clever trick gets amd free sync running on an nvidia geforce graphics card so if that's something that you've been trying to find out find out if you get better graphics you can do that you'll find that one again pc world or post on the amd thread for reddit uh amd is currently slashing the prices of the first gen ryzen thread rippers we've talked about this a few times now starting at $300, I'm not sure if that's even cheaper than before, working all the way up to, wow, they're top of the line there, $2,990 is $1,800, that is sick, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, PC Gamer talking about AMD saying the Radeon Pro V340 is a dual GPU beast based on Vega. So you want to know specifics, and I love it. I love it. The big battle between AMD and, and NVIDIA, it's really starting to get good. You know what? That battle continues on. That price is going to drop, drop, drop. So that's going to be really good. Uh, Palmer Lucky believes he'll have a cure for VR motion sickness by the end of the year. I don't know how that's going to be happening. Um, I think there's more to it. I think there's people who get motion sick, period, and I don't know if you can cure it. And then you have people who get motion sick because of the latency of VR units. Uh, I also saw another thing where Palmer Lucky tried out and really hammered that that mixed uh, or, or uh, augmented reality glasses. I meant to pull that up, but I couldn't find it. But he's out there. He's he's getting his word and name out there. Palmer Lucky, the the head of Oculus, obviously working for uh, Facebook at this point. Uh, what else? YouTube is making it easy for you, you, to see how much time you spend watching videos. I don't know if I need this. I, when I look at my Steam at how many hours I've played various different games, I don't know if that makes me happy. But if you look at your YouTube app, it'll actually chart your hours or minutes of uh, YouTube time. Uh, so that could be scary for a lot of you. Uh, WCCF Tech also talking about the RTX 2080. 3D Mark Time Spy score leaked, clocked at 2 gigahertz, and that beats a GTX 1080 tie without all co cores. Um, whew, <laughs> they were right over my head. Uh, G-Sync is amazing. Am I going to have to switch over to the dark side? I used to be an AMD guy, and then I switched. I've gone back and forth, back and forth, whether I was a Intel slash nvidia guy or whether i was an amd uh uh guy man what was the graphics card i can't even remember what the name of the graphics card was that amd became or amd took over but they were like the amd graphics cards anyway sorry i can't remember um another thing at kick guru here talking about the rtx 2080 time spy result reportedly leaks out if I'm not mistaken, it was like barely or no faster in certain categories than an 1080 uh, or than a Titan, if I'm not mistaken, was the compared video card. Um, anyway, again, next gen, you buy it first, you're paying a premium and waiting on some things to get really uh, uh, moved along. Brad, they've had those for a while. Uh, that dates back to even before E3. The Ferrari, uh, Tim said, T uh, Thrustmaster just announced Ferrari headphones. Um, they are, they have two different versions of that same headphone, which is a nice headphone. I've worn them, but I haven't tested them. Uh, and one is the Air Force edition for the flight sim side of things, and then the Ferrari branding for the racing side. And of course, the Ferrari ones are red. I showed pictures of them even from E3. Uh, okay, a couple eSport articles. What is eSport? A look at an explosive billion, billion dollar industry. This is at CNN. So just more and more of how big eSport is becoming. 
Um, I didn't really mean to bring this up, but it's here. But Potoski News talking about why what parents should know about esports, and it looks like it's a reactionary uh, article to the tragedy that went on over the weekend. Probably not very relevant. I think that was really an isolated case. But anyway, I don't want to bring that up again. Mobile Syrup talking about Xbox One virtual reality headset has reportedly been shelved. So we read an article along uh, about a month ago about how Microsoft has really taken a hit, leaving the door open for everybody else when it comes to re virtual reality. And um, I think, you know, Davey, that very well could be. When it comes to tech, I just tell you guys because it's just right over my head i i'm not a tech guy at all um but i know it it applies to what we do here so that does bring us to the end of the regular news but i did one more thing i did want to tell you uh this was sent in to me by davy jones davy jones along with sim racing 604 mike uh i had john sable on and this is on that sim racing perspectives podcast and if you want to hear some thoughts from some very knowledgeable people in sim racing about a variation of topics, uh, John Sable, formerly of Inside Sim Racing, was on their show, and I heard it's a pretty good listen. So you might want to go check it out. I'll probably put it on the background as I'm working here in the studio today. Did a full rig changeover and uh, pulled the Thrustmaster wheel off the rig back to a Bodner with my Wave Italy pedals and a Sam Maxwell Customs wheel uh, that belongs to Chris P of the patron program in the Discord channel. And I'm uh, trying to get this wrapped up and send it back to him because another person has let my greasy little hands touch their brand new wheel before them. I'm thinking I should put on gloves. It's on here, but I haven't driven on it yet. I probably should wear gloves. It's so beautiful. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Hope you had fun. Hope you get out there and do some racing. And if you ever know of anything that we need to cover here on the Pit Stop, be sure to email me, Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll be sure to add it to the show. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.